please. Thank you. Mr. President, Mr. Commissioner, Madam Ministers, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's great to be back in Bulgaria. Last time I was here is 30 years ago, so I'm sorry it took me so long to come back. Uh, Last time I was here, Europe was divided by the Iron Curtain. I had to go through a whole lot of paranoid securities in both directions on my way from uh, Stockholm, where I used to live, to Bulgaria. So I'm only mentioning that to say change is possible, change is happening. Let's make sure that it is the change that we want to see. And I'm actually here to prove my daughter wrong. She graduated from high school last Friday and she's moving to Asia. She tells me that's where the future is. I think she might be right, but I hope she may be wrong. So let's make sure that there is a future for Europe and let's make sure that that future is green. WWF, uh, one of the world's leading conservation organizations, has been working for a future where people live in harmony with nature for 51 years. We're today celebrating the 15th anniversary of our program in the Danube Carpathian ecoregion. Why nature conservation? Well, it's very easy. We're all dependent on nature for our food, our water, our materials, and our energy security. There is no way to develop without healthy and productive ecosystems. We cannot live without healthy and productive ecosystems. Every second year, WWF uh, produces the Living Planet Report. Uh, a colleague joked the other week and said it should be named the Dying Planet Report, and let's prove him wrong too. But the, there are two very strong messages in the Living Planet Report. One is we are losing biodiversity, as we heard from, from the commissioner and from, from Vesey, hundreds, maybe thousand times faster than natural evolution which means we are eroding our natural capital and we're making it more difficult for ourselves in the future. We're also increasing the pressure on nature, uh, on our natural resources, and we are creating an ecological debt. And those of you who've been in debt, you know, you can borrow money from a bank, but at one point the bank would want to have its money back. And we are, when it comes to relation to nature, in payback times. We have in Europe and elsewhere been over consuming natural resources and we created a debt that now starts biting us in the back. A global average, we are now consuming resources as if we had one and a half planet. That means it takes nature 18 months to produce what we consume in a year. Last time I checked there was only one planet and clearly the only long-term solution is to fit our consumption patterns into the carrying capacity of that one planet. An average European lives as if we had access to three resources. I'm Swedish, we're probably higher than that. I live in Switzerland, it's definitely higher than that. Here in Bulgaria, I know the hunger and the appetite for economic development, but you're actually already living as if you had resources from 1.8 planet. So your development model, as the other European countries' development model, is not long-term sustainable. So we have to find a better way. I've also been told that the last two years, the Bulgarian economy is using 20% more resources than two years ago. So there's a rapid development of resource depletion going on in this country, which is, of course, not sustainable in the long, long term. So how do we get to one planet economy? EU has a vision for a resource efficient green economy. Uh, by 2050, the economy has grown in a way that respects resource constraint and planetary boundaries, contributing to global economic transformation. That's a bold and strong vision. The economy is competitive, inclusive, and provides a high standard of living with much lower environmental impacts. We heard the commissioner uh, elaborating on that earlier. But how do we get there, and what is it really? What is a green economy? It is development that ensures food, water, materials, and energy security for all and forever. It's producing what we need today without undermining the future and the possibilities of the coming generations. 
that can only happen within the planetary boundaries. We cannot continue to overconsume natural resources, and we need to make sure that our ecosystems are have integrity and biodiversity. If we were growing apples, and I'm sure in Bulgaria there's a lot of people growing apples, you wouldn't cut down the trees to get the fuel wood because you would undermine next year's harvest. Well, that's exactly what we're doing uh, today. We're undermining tomorrow by overconsuming resources today. So what we need to do is we need to preserve our natural capital. We need to halt biodiversity loss. We need to restore damaged ecosystems and ecosystem services. And we need to expand protection of nature. Why are we overusing natural resources? Well, the economic incentives, incentives makes it very logical to overconsume resources. Transportation is uh, to shape the subsidy systems, benefits over production, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we need to find a way to redirect financial flows. So we need to find a way to value nature differently. Everybody, I think, understands that a country with well-managed and plenty of resources clean air and safe drinking water is a richer country than a country with no resources, dirty air and unhealthy drinking water. But in our economic books, that doesn't show up. The natural capital is not visible in the GDP. So we need to find a way to stop cooking the books and actually account the real values of nature, the real values of our natural capital. Uh, WWF supports stakeholders, including governments here in this country and elsewhere, to assess, map, and evaluate ecosystem services. Uh, Bulgaria here in the Danube Basin is one of the more active governments. We've created the Danube Payment, the Danube Payment for Ecosystem Services project, which is now in its fourth year. It has yielded case studies and recommendations on how to value ecosystems for nature and societies and how this can be made more transparent to highlight business opportunities and channel government, government investments. Let me give you the example that we heard very briefly uh, just a couple of minutes ago from the Rusensky Loam Natur Nature Park, an area of 3,400 hectares of forest and wet meadows that sequestered carbon for the value of two million years, uh, two million, sorry, two million euros per year. The na nature park itself and its beauty attracts tourism for the value of 80,000 euros. And animal fodder and wood production in the park creates a value of about 150,000 euros a year. So these are small numbers in a big country, but it's a, r a really inspiring model, I think. So we need to redirect financial flows, but we also need to find a way pro to, to produce better. We need to reduce our input and waste. We need to manage our resources sustainably, and we need to scale up renewable energy production. WWF has been closely involved in the effort led by the International Commission for Protection of the Danube River in involving governments in the region to, uh, to develop guiding principles for sustainable hydropower aiming, of course, as producing energy, but limiting the negative impacts on the river and the ecosystem services it provides. Bulgaria here has been one of the first countries in the region that declared protected areas as no-go areas for hydropower. WWF believes that's a good way to go, and we hope Bulgaria's example will inspire other countries in the region. On transportation, we've been working closely to identify solutions to promote transportation by water and roads, and at the same time, reduce the negative impacts on natural habitats and ecosystem goods and services. On the Danube, we've been working with governments and navigation authorities to identify solutions for promoting navigation while maintaining river dynamics and related ecosystem services. We also need to consume more wisely. Food engages everybody. We all think about food every day. So individual choice your diet choice, what you buy and what you produce and what you eat on a daily basis is engaging a lot of people. It's a good way to engage people in an environmental discussion. So individual choice is important, but systemic change is key. We need to maximize the market of certified and sustainable product. We need to address food waste and food loss. 
There are different numbers floating around, but something between 30 and 40 percent of all the food produced is never, meet, never, uh, never consumed, either because of storage and transportation challenges in the production, or in waste in restaurants or school canteens or hospitals or private homes. Food never consumed should not be produced. We shouldn't throw away food. We also need to find a better balance in our diet. In my country, we've been doubling meat consumption in the last 20 years, and meat is a very high energy, uh, energy uh, demanding product. So we need to find a way for rich people to eat a more balanced food so poorer people can get access to that protein. Uh, we also need to look at housing. The built environment is a big challenge for, for the climate. 40% of the climate gases are from the built environment in Europe. And transportation, as we touched upon very briefly. We need to find a way to govern our resources. So how do we find out what is the best use of a resource? We have always competing legitimate uses of a resource. Let's call it the Danube uh, River. So how do you create the right trade-offs? What kind of mechanisms and principles do you need to apply to make sure you understand if this river is for fish, sediment migration, hydropower energy, etc.? We need to find a way to integrate land use planning and take all the different perspectives into account. And we need to find a way to measure success that goes well beyond GDP. And finally, there is no government on this planet, elected or otherwise, who will stay in office unless it produces jobs. The future is going to be about jobs. It's going to be about, we need, when I went to school, we learned about the, the industrial revolution that created a couple of hundred thousand jobs in a hundred years. We will have to create millions and millions and millions of jobs in Europe and even more jobs in the rest of the world. And the best way to produce, to, to uh, to create new jobs is green development. We know from a recent study that we've done in Europe that a, mi a billion of euros invested from the multi-annual financial framework of the European Union would create 100,000 new jobs, 130,000, sorry, 130,000 new jobs, 29,900 jobs in Natura 2000, 25,900 jobs in energy savings, 21,500 jobs in sustainable transports, and 52,700 jobs in renewable energy production. So there's a future here, there's a choice here. The money that the European Union provides uh, should be invested in green infrastructure and it should be invested in green jobs. That would probably, or hopefully, convince my daughter not to move to Asia. So thank you very much.